How many five-year-olds can you take at once? This is gonna get taken horrible, like really out of context, so I can't answer that. I could beat up a baby. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I got into a fight before. I actually won too. I fought a kid. I was playing basketball with him. I did a layup and I kind of like elbowed him. And then he wanted, he like shoved me. And I was like, what, you wanna go? You wanna go? You wanna go? You wanna do this? You wanna go? And then he didn't do anything. I was like, yeah, that's right. And then I turned around and picked up the ball. And then he like tried to tackle me from behind. And then we were like rolling around. And I, I was like on top of him and I, I started like punching him in, in the kidney because that's what everybody, you know, you're supposed to punch people in the kidney because it hurts and fucks them up. So I started punching him in the kidney. He was like, oh, my kidney, no, I have a problem. Don't punch me in the kidney. And I kept punching him in the kidney. And then I kind of stopped because he started getting like really serious about it. I was like, oh shit, like, sorry, dude. And then I backed off of him and then he flipped it on me and then he ended up, he flipped me on the ground and then sat on my head, but I was stronger than him. So after, like he sat on my head for a while and it fucking hurt. And then I flipped him. Then I got him on the ground again and started punching the kidney again. Cause fuck him. And then he said that I was, he was gonna, his parent was gonna sue me because he has a kidney condition that I'm gonna get like in trouble with the law. And I thought he was serious. So he went to his house and then I went into the woods and was like really sad. Like one of my friends went into the woods and was like, hey, you're fine. Gee, like don't be a pussy, just stop crying. Get the fuck out of the woods. So then I got out of the woods that's the story. I never even like saw that kid again. Somebody asked me, they messaged me, they were like, hey, how's it going with the neighbor lady? It's like, what, the you mean the 80 year old neighbor lady? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not pursuing. I, I told the story a while ago. All right, so this is the juicy gossip around town. There's this 80 year old dude who lives next to us, or he's like 70 or something. And he has this sweet wife and they play like local bridge games with like other families. And Duke cheated on her with someone else who was playing bridge. And he said that he was gonna get a divorce so that he could be with his true love, the other bridge lady. And she was really nice. She's like one of the only people who's like pretty nice to me in the community. Like she, she, she gave my mom a box with the name Clint on it, and it was a bunch of cookies. What a nice lady. I've never, I've only met her like when I take the dog on walks. She makes me fucking cookies. And that slut cheats on her with a fucking bitch who plays bridge? Are you kidding me, Duke? Are you kidding me? So then the moment he does that, the chick who's cheating on him is like, yeah, this isn't secret anymore. I'm fucking dumping your ass. I apologize, and she apologizes to everybody, and Duke's just there with his dick out like, uh, don't divorce me, please. Fucking Duke. So then Chad said I should fuck the old lady because she's so sweet, and it would get revenge on Duke. And you know what? I 100% could fuck that old lady if I wanted to. But she's like 80 years old. She was probably hot, like, in the 60s. No joke, she's like a decent looking old lady, but I can't do that. Dude, if you seriously think I was like, hey, sorry about your husband, you wanna make him jealous? <laughs> you really think she wouldn't be down? She's like 80. If I got turned out by an 80 year old woman, I seriously would fucking kill myself. I like how somebody in chat wrote like a serious message about, bitch, you probably just remind her about her grandchildren, do not pursue. Dude, I'm not pursuing, trust me. This is a fucking joke, it's not happening. 100% not happening. I'll give you like the top five worst hosts ever, okay? One time, hosted a Chinese chick and uh, she was real excited. She had no idea what anybody was saying because it was completely Chinese. She's a Hearthstone streamer, gets about 2,000 views. And she decides to translate some troll ass message when like everything is nice, she finds the one troll message because it's big, it's got emojis on it, and it's like, Clint would love to fuck you or something like in the ass. You have nice slut lips or something. And then she immediately turns it on 30 minute mode. So you can only post one thing every 30 minutes and then proceeds to ban like every single person in her chat. Damn, that was bad. She was like, oh, I type a lot, I guess. I don't know. And I was like, okay, so uh, what's like your username? And she was like, it's destiny with a heart 
which was her fucking Snapchat username. And I'm like, no, 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 your Twitch username. And she was like, what's Twitch? And I was like, what's Twitch? How did you even add me? And she was like, oh, I found you on Plenty of Fish. We matched. I was like, I don't have a Plenty of Fish. And then everything started, everything started clicking together. It was like, oh my God, Chad made me a Plenty of Fish and is matching people. And I was like, holy shit, I'm so sorry. Send me a selfie though, I wanna see what you look like. And she was fat as fuck. There was one time I was playing mini basketball with my dad. Uh, you know, like one of those hoops that you put on a door and he went to dunk and he knocked the entire door down. Like he fell and he was like, oh, my leg, oh. And I saw that and I ran upstairs and hit behind a chair. <laughs> as I'm like running away, he's like, Clint, Clint, where are you going? I need you. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he's gonna hurt me, dude. He's gonna hurt me. So I ran upstairs. He still tells that story. That shit cracks me up. He never, he never like hit me or anything. I was just scared cause he was yelling and shit and I was really young and I was just like, I gotta get out of here. You know, he's playing me. He's, he's mad that I made him do this. Another story that my parents tell, or I think my uncle tells this. This is like my uncle that just got divorced. I was like four or three. I like got like really mad about something and I punched my mom. I was like three or four, so it did like nothing, obviously. I like punch her in the leg. And they were like, oh, you don't do that to your mom. Like, you know, go go into you, go into this room and just sit there and do nothing. And then they go into the room like 20 minutes later and my mom was like gonna apologize or something. I forget what she did. Or maybe I was supposed to apologize. That probably makes more sense. So she goes in 20 minutes later and I'm just like punching the couch. There's just like a couch that I'm just like wailing on and I'm like chewing on it. I'm just getting all my aggression out. And then they come back in and she looks at me doing this and it's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, you want another one? And then they just laugh and close the door. That shit, I was feisty kid, dude. I was a feisty kid. I, I did get fired from Toys R Us. The day that I got fired, it was super busy and I sold something to someone and there was just like a sticker that was put up that wasn't even put up by me. And I was selling people based on that sticker. That's how much money they get. So then I started selling to this, the, you know, a couple people and this guy's like, yo, what the fuck's going on? Why are these people getting such good prices? And it's like, well, they're taking advantage of the sticker deal right here. And then he runs and just rips the sticker off. And then he's like, oh shit. And then I sold, I don't know, Call of Duty, like some shitty Call of Duty that would never ever get bought based on the sticker. But then, you know, I ring him up. For some reason, the system is saying something different than what the fucking sticker said. And then this, like the super head boss is like, yeah, I'm gonna have to ring him up, like at the front, like you can't do it. I'm gonna have to do it. And my line is huge. So I was like, oh shit, dude, I fucked these people over. They're like halfway through a transaction and they gotta go to the fucking front desk. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. It's apparently, you know, this guy's taking down all the sticker deals. And the reason why he was doing that was because we were just hemorrhaging money and you know, Toys R Us was a sinking ship. And later in the day, I had like a crazy line and I was like managing a ton of people and I had another problem with the stickers and he was just like, you know, Clint, just take the rest of the, you know, just go. Just take the rest of the day off, get out of here. We don't need you anymore. I was like, all right, but uh, my line's pretty long. And then he was like, well, they'll just, they'll just go somewhere else. Someone else can handle it. And then the cashier that was working next to me was like, we really could use Clint right now. Like we. We actually could use him. Can he, he worked just like an hour longer and the guy was like, no, nah, dude, gotta go, Clint's gone. And I was like, okay, got it. Nobody appreciates me, dude. <sighs> Nobody appreciates me. Yeah, he did get fired. That whole, that whole situation I feel a little vindicated on. They fire me and then an entire global corporation goes under. They were like, damn, we were per, like there's board meeting with CEOs and they're all sitting around this fucking long table and they're like, Damn, we were doing so well, and then that one fucking ginger bitch sold that Call of Duty goats. We're in debt, boys. The dream's dead, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to shut down. I don't even know why you'd get mad. Like, we're never, it, that was, like, we're never gonna sell that Call of Duty Ghost, dude. It's never gonna get sold. So the fact that I somehow convinced someone to buy Call of Duty Ghost is actually incredible. And we punished them. 
we punished them and punished me for doing such a good job. You should be like, damn, Clint, you're a wizard. Okay, most embarrassing story about Clint. Well, I told you guys the biting one. Um, that was quite embarrassing. Uh, oh, okay, this is an embarrassing story, but it's actually really funny. So when I was younger, I'm a couple years older than Clint. To get him to do what I wanted him to do, such as run upstairs and uh, grab like a sweatshirt that I wanted, or uh, if I wanted him... Yeah, I used to time Clint, so I would make everything a race for him. So if I was downstairs in the basement and I wanted food, I would say, Clint, I'm going to time you. How fast can you run upstairs? Can you beat your old time? He would do it. I got him, I got away with this for years. And mind you, I never no, I actually never timed him. I, I got a no, I got away with this till he was a good like seven or eight. Like he, yeah, he would... I think that's how he got into speed running. I was the start of his speed running. Guys, everybody should give me credit for this. Like, because he would speed run to go get my stuff. Uh, I did have a problem with my balls for a while, but that's not an underlying, like, chronic condition. It was just, like, a one-time thing. Please don't make me tell this story. They just hurt. I don't remember it as well as I used to, so if I say something that isn't correct with the other times I've told the story, I probably told it more more true the first time I told it, all right? It's not lies. I was streaming a lot. You're already gonna be like, false, fake story. And my balls started to hurt and I got really, really worried about it. I thought it was uh, my imagination or like I just like sat on it wrong one day, but it just kept being weird. And then I talked to you guys about it, which was a mistake, because you guys said I had cancer, which just got me more worried. What exam am I taking? I'm going to the doctor. If during this run, I run out of the chair and hold my balls, be very worried about me, okay. Thanks to the $3 Blixy, Clint got ball cancer for his birthday. Feels balls, man. Hey, I probably don't have ball cancer. Thank you for the $3, though. <laughs> My balls are kind of sore, and uh, I'm worried about it. I had chat try and help me, okay? That's what's wrong. And it's really fucking annoying. So then I went to the doctor on my birthday, and I went to the walk-in clinic to get my balls checked out. So I get this dude who's like 70, and he touches my balls, and it was excruciatingly painful. He just like instantly grabs, oh, come on, Mario. He like instantly grabs the part that hurts the most, and he's like, you feel anything? It's like, yes. <laughs> oh my God. And he said, yeah, that's a common problem. He has a great birthday present. He said I didn't have cancer. He said that if you get in pain, it's a good thing. <laughs> but if you get, if there's no pain and there's a lump, it's really bad. So if you guys have a lump and you don't feel anything, it feels totally normal, that's fucked. So he said it's a common issue. Your balls are jangling around too much. Most likely you are having too rough sex. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that has been known to happen with me sometimes. So he recommended that I get briefs or a jock strap. So I got a jock strap and it was kind of weird. Your ass just completely hangs out of a jock strap for, I mean, it, it's kind of obvious, but like it does completely just hang out. So I started wearing this jock strap like every single day all the time. I also, if you guys look at that B-Feel video I made, that shows one of the jock straps that I bought. I bought a jock strap with like a bunch of perforated holes in it because it's supposed to aerate better, but apparently it's like a sexy time, like, ooh, like, ooh, you can, ooh, like gay people wear it or something to like, I don't know, it's like male lingerie. I was wearing male lingerie for a while. And then I had to go to the doctor again like a week later or something, and I had a lady doctor. <laughs> yeah, dude. You guys ever get an erection at the doctor? You ever think, hmm, what if I got an erection right now? And they ended up having to like check me. So turns out she's like dropped the drawers and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do it and I'm gonna see if she even says anything. Maybe she'll just go around the erection and not be worried. So, you know, drop the drawers, massive bone in her face, and she's like, oh, this is normal. This, this happens sometimes. So she breaks out a cold spoon and starts tapping the tip of my penis with it until it eventually loses its steam. And, you know, it's kind of weird. She's a great doctor, though. Yeah, 
favorite story of the year goes to Soup. Have I told you guys about the soup I give my dog? Like the special dog soup she gets? So sometimes when I feed my dog, it's a dark room and I get the bowls confused. So she doesn't always drink all of her water. So sometimes I'll put the food in the water bowl and then it's just like, well shit, Juno, you got soup today. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? And she's like, oh boy, it's soup day. It's soup day. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, she likes soup day. That's her. That's one of her favorites, dude. She fucking loves soup day. White people happy soup day. Mix some coconut oil with the kibble. They eat that shit right up. What am I, Gordon Ramsay? I'm not gonna put coconut oil on fucking dog food. She already snorts that shit down in like two seconds. <laughs> She's just gonna eat it faster. I don't want her to eat it faster. 